This clip will provide an introduction to derivatives and derivative functions. And we'll need to think about derivatives because basically, because economic agents, that's me and you when we go shopping or managers, if they make decisions, we make decisions. And the sort of questions we have to ask ourselves as an economic agent are something like, how much should I produce? or how much uh, Nutella should I eat for breakfast? And these are sort of typical decisions we have to make. And if we are thinking about some sort of rational economic agents, then when we make these decisions, we really have to think and answer the following question for ourselves. How does profit change if I produce less, for instance? Or how does my utility change if I eat more Nutella? This is how we should be thinking as rational agents about our decisions. Um, and we will try and formalize this in mathematical terms. We're not saying that we are always acting rationally. By all means, we are not. Uh, but when we are, we may be able to formalize our thinking mathematically. So. Formally, what we may be saying, we're after profit, let's call that pi of x, and x is the variable which we can change, or utility u of x, and x is the variable we can change. How much Nutella do we eat? How much do we produce? And what we are after is how that profit, pi of x, changes as x changes, and how the utility changes as x changes. And the mathematical uh, expression is this one, d pi x over dx, or dux over dx. The general notation we are using for derivatives is as follows. Imagine we have some sort of function y, that's a function of x, so that could be profit or utility, and we are after the derivatives, and we call that y prime or f prime of x, and that is what we have just introduced, dy over dx. All of these three terms are basically interchangeable. So it's possibly easiest to, to start thinking about this graphically. So let's assume we have some sort of function graphically represented by this curve. And let's think about two points. We we'll call one p and we call the other point q. That p is the value of the function at x1. So we have y1 is the value of f at, at x1. And we'll have another value of x, we call it x2, which is here larger than x1 and the difference, let's call that delta x. And here we have y2, which is the value of the function at x2. So let's draw a line here, um, sometimes called a secant line between P and Q, two points that lie on our function. What we are now after, or what we're going to look at first now is the slope of that line, because that tells us how the value of y changed as we moved from input value x1 to input value x2. So it's the slope of the line that connects p and q that we are interested in now, for starters. Now, we know how to calculate that because that's just represented by delta y over delta x. Delta y is how the y value changed as we changed x from x1 to x2, and that's delta x. So delta y is f of x2 minus f of x1, delta x is x2 minus x1. So to look at this, so in some sense, that's an expression of how the value of the function changed as we moved from x1 to x2. But to think about this, we really, we had to specify these two values of x, x1 and x2. So we need to look at two x values. And instead of x2, we could have, of course, chosen any sort of other value. 
what we are really after now is some sort of expression for the rate of change in a function at a particular point of x a particular value of x say x1 okay so can we get a rate of change at a value of x1 or do we always need to specify a second value and then say okay how does it change as we move from x1 to x2 this rate of change at a particular point is then what we call a derivative uh, at a particular point x equals x1 for instance and we label that f prime x or also dy over dx evaluated at the point x1 in our previous graphical representation I and mean, when uh, we looked at the difference between the increase between two points and we called it delta now we use the d indicating that we are looking at the rate of change at a particular point so that's the difference between the d and the delta and graphically we will be looking at the slope of the tangent to the function at point p or at the point of the function evaluated at x1 uh, so that that's what we are now graphically looking at it's possibly easiest to think about like this we already see we can immediately see what the tangent is uh, of course i assume you know about tangents but you can see how we can move from the delta y over delta x concept to the dy dx if you think about moving from point q ever closer to point p and looking at ever smaller seconds or meaning seconds that connect points that are ever closer together so we're moving that point x2 ever closer to x1 or the point on the function q ever closer to p and the seconds will get ever ever closer and eventually if q merges onto p we will get to the tangent so mathematically what we've been doing is we've increasing that uh, we've been decreasing delta x down to zero so we're moving delta x to zero in the limit delta x goes to zero and we are then looking at the slope of the line pq the second as delta x goes to zero so what we can do is we can in our expression above for the slope of the second we can replace x2 with x1 plus delta x and then we'll just replicate our uh, formula for the slope uh, divided over x1 plus delta x which is x2 minus x1 now we can see in the denominator the x1 cancels out and we are left with the definition of our derivative the limit of delta x going to zero of f x1 plus delta x minus f x1 over dx so graphically we represent a derivative by a tangent of a function at a particular point now to be for a tangent to be well defined and therefore the derivative we actually have some conditions on the function fx so not every function has a derivative at every point right? most functions reasonable functions will have derivatives at some points but not necessarily at all points in particular we need fx at the point at which we want the derivative to have some sort of notion of smoothness it needs to be smooth in some sense and it's possibly easiest to explain what we mean by illustrating two counter examples so here for instance we'll start with a function which has a kink sorry for the little skip in the clip which we'll see in a moment this blue function has a kink and at that kink we can think of several values being se several lines being the tangent to that function so that is a not very well defined tangent the second example is one where we have what we call a step function so very simplest version of a flat function up to a certain point and then the function makes a jump and moves on on a different level so again at that step 
there is no clearly defined derivative. And so this function is missing a sense of smoothness at the point at which we want to evaluate the derivative. So what we need from now on is what we call the rules of differentiation. We will have mathematical expressions for a function and we can't always work graphically. Sometimes we'll just have very complicated function or higher dimensional functions. And what we will want from now on is that if we know the value of the function fx, or not the value, if we know the function, for instance, 7 plus 5x or 3 plus 7x squared minus 3x cubed or 3 over x or special functions like the exponential of 4x plus 1 or the logarithm of 2 over the logarithm of x plus 3. So basically what we want is once we know these functions we want to be able to algebraically figure out what is the derivative of fx at a particular point. What is f prime x or dy over dx? And this is what another set of videos will talk about. <laughs>